Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Easter. It's great to have you with us today. The bulletin, parish notes, and the resource Taking Faith Home have been uploaded onto our website and into our BELC worship group, but you shouldn't need the bulletin to fully participate in this service as everything will be projected that you will need. A few notes on this service. We will have a kids talk this morning, so uh, go and get your children and grandchildren, make sure they're around for that. That will happen early in the service. Uh, if you would like to contribute one of our kids talks in the future, uh, please let me know and we can talk about how you make that simple recording and then share it with me so that I can include it in a future service. I want to thank Caitlin McDougall for accompanying many of our hymns and our liturgy this morning, as well as our choir members, some of our choir members and praise team members for lending their voices. And thank you to Lisa Whitman for bringing all of their voices together uh, as they were safely recording in their own homes, uh, but you brought them together into one place for us to enjoy. Uh, their parts in the music. So thank you, Lisa, for that. Also, thank you to Bob Meeker, who is our assisting minister today. I want to let you know that I'll be changing my, my regular day off. Some of you know that my, my day off is usually I try to take Fridays, but in the current rhythm of life, that hasn't been working. And so I'm going to switch that to Monday. And so my plans are uh, this Monday, I will be taking a day off. And one other announcement. Many of you received an email about this, but we have a continuation of our Lenten theme on prayer. And you are invited to be part of a virtual conversation called Listening to Our Still Speaking God. And this will happen between now and Pentecost. We'll explore the four movements of attending, pondering, responding, and being uh, that for centuries have brought people of faith into an abiding, faithful, fruitful awareness of God's loving presence. Pastor John Burrow will serve as host and, uh, and guide for us. Much of the material will come from a book called Opening to God by David C. Benner. And the book is a wise, expansive, generous, and gentle introduction into the practice of Lexio Divina or spiritual listening. To participate, simply uh, send an email to 
Pastor John Burrow, that's Pastor J. Burrow with one R, P A S T O R J B U R O W at yahoo.com, indicating that you want to be a part of this, a part of this group. Pastor John will somewhat regularly make suggestions and, and give prompts, uh, share maybe even frustrations and exercises in listening to God who yearns to be in relationship in communion with each one of us. And now let us begin with our confession and forgiveness. It is nearly impossible to understand what God accomplishes in and through Jesus Christ as we just experienced in Holy Week and Easter. Each year we walk this journey to the cross that culminates in an open tomb. Thankfully, we can come before our God and one another and confess our sin and celebrate Christ's forgiveness. God, we admit that we are just like Thomas. We will not believe unless we see and touch your hands and side. We confess that sin is the nature of our human condition and that we need you to forgive us and free us. People of God, here is good news for all of us today. God gives us the gift of faith and we are called blessed because we believe without seeing. We believe in Jesus Christ, the one whose hands and side were pierced to show us just how much God loves us. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace in the world for the help. 
Let us pray. Most gracious Father, whose Son returned from the grave in glory and appeared to his disciples, grant us the faith to believe beyond what our eyes can tell us, so that you will send us into the world to live out our faith in you. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Good morning. I, I brought you all downstairs this morning into my office space, uh, but don't worry, like my office at the church, I have a lot of fun stuff close by that, uh, you know, that keeps me busy. Um, but I brought you down here today because I wanted to show you this, uh, this little Lego minifigure. Um, this was released a few years ago on the 40th, 40th anniversary of when the very first Lego minifigure was released. It was also a, a policeman. And you can see here he's holding a couple pieces that look like the, look like the set that, uh, that that policeman came in. So I wanted to show you this. And I also wanted to show you this. This is that original set. Um, I was given this on my sixth or seventh birthday, so uh, you guessed it, like about 40 years ago. And uh, I have them both together uh, close by me when I'm, when I'm down here working. Now, why do you suppose I wanted to talk to you today about police officers? Well, for one, police officers are supposed to keep us safe. They keep us safe. They help us when we're afraid. And in a little bit, I'm going to read a Bible story about Jesus' disciples, his followers, um, about just a, a week after he was, uh, he was crucified and, and rose from the dead. They were afraid. They were gathered together in a house. Uh, most of them were together and they were afraid that the same people who hurt and killed Jesus would hurt and kill them too. So they were, they were afraid. And Jesus came right through the locked door, came through the door and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. He didn't want them to be afraid. He wanted them to have the confidence that he was with them so that they could go out and tell the world that Jesus had been raised from the dead. We experience fear sometimes. Some of you might be a little afraid right now because we're living in, in uh, kind of a different time, not being able to go to school and uh, not being able to go to the store and do the fun things that... Um, that you've always done well we have a lot of people keeping us safe we have uh, policemen certainly policemen and women and you also have who else well your parents and grandparents 
they keep us safe too. And we have them and we have so many people keeping us safe. And Jesus is keeping us safe. God is keeping us safe. God has given us all of these people around us to help keep us safe uh, during this time, keep us from, hopefully, uh, keep us from, from getting sick. All of the, there are so many ways that God is keeping us safe. And so Jesus comes to you today to say, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Jesus is keeping us safe by giving us all of these people. So let's give thanks to God. Let's give thanks to God for the, the police and all the emergency people and, and for our parents, everyone who works together to help keep us safe. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for giving us the people who keep us safe. Help us to be strong right now so we can be ready to tell everyone about Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks for coming down here with me this morning. And uh, you'll have more children's messages coming up. Um, not in this service, but every Sunday we'll have a, another children's message for you too. Uh, like this. So, thank you. Our first reading is from the second chapter of Acts. Here Peter preaches the full gospel with great confidence and freedom. A reading from Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, saying, You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption." You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God has sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Peter, the first chapter. In this reading, Christ is celebrated as the undisputed living hope of our faith. Peter writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, 
being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house. And Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I bring you grace, peace, and love in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The problem with fear. We have all probably had an experience with fear in the last month or so. Living with that fear, knowing that we are all in the midst of this, with this fear. I don't think I could have chosen a better gospel reading for this Sunday, even if I had tried. I don't know how, much, how many of you noticed the prayer before worship that we have printed in our bulletin each week. It, changes with the theme and readings for each week and so it's meant to to apply and we always go over it on Tuesdays at our staff meeting and for the week and and make sure that it fits and see if any changes need to be made and well if I thought that the gospel fits this prayer um, caught us all off guard and so I'd like to share it come Lord Jesus Come into our midst. We await you, filled with the fears and anxieties of life, anxious about 
our employment, fearful for our health, anxious about our family, fearful about things we see happening in our nation and our world. May we see your hands and side. May we hear again your words of peace. May we know the joy of your presence with us. Come, Lord Jesus, come and be with us in this time of worship. Amen. In our story today, the disciples, all but two of them, because Judas had gone out and hanged himself, and Thomas simply wasn't there. We don't know why. So ten of the disciples were uh, gathered together, and they were still trying to sort out the events of, of the past week and um, try to figure out what had happened. Their teacher, their Lord, and their master had been arrested, tried, beaten, crucified, and buried all before their very eyes. He had been buried, but when the women came to the tomb to anoint his body um, uh, after the Sabbath had ended, the body was not there. And Peter and one of the other disciples went to the empty tomb and they saw that it was empty. And then the resurrected Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene and told her to go and tell the disciples that she had seen the Lord. And she did that. And she, she did as she was told. She went and said that, that he was ascending to his father and their father, to his God and their God. What did all this mean? They were understandably afraid. Afraid that the violence that had been visited upon their teacher would find its way to them too. Not knowing yet if they could believe what Mary had said to them. They were afraid that Jesus' fate would be their fate. Now there is unfounded fear. The kind that holds people back. For no good reason. And then there is the healthy sort of fear, the let's be smart about this kind of fear, the kind that keeps you safe. I think the disciples experienced both of these at various times, but here it is really that latter type of fear keeping the disciples behind locked doors. The same mob that cried for Jesus' crucifixion could have easily been coming for them. So let's talk about the problem with fear. Now you might have heard me say, because I've included it in sermons in the past and, and said it in casual conversation, that 85%, I think I've said it so much because I need to hear it so much that 85% of what people worry about never actually happens. What they're afraid of never happens. And I can point you to that study if you'd like to know more about it. 85% of the things that we worry about. But even knowing this, the problem is that we let our fear hold us back. It's fine if it keeps us safe, but not helpful if it holds us back from doing what and becoming what God wants us to be. I think that what we are experiencing right now, and rightly so, is the healthy, let's be smart about this kind of fear. But I do wonder if it is holding us back in some ways. For me, I am glad that this situation has forced us from inside of the church outside to be more fully in the virtual world. But at the same time, I wonder if being forced out has bent our focus back inward too much. We aren't behind locked doors, but are we really embracing 
being out here? Or are we just anxious to get back inside? I don't know. But in our gospel reading for today, Jesus came and stood among the disciples. John had told us that, has told us that the doors were locked. They were shut, they were locked. But Jesus came and stood among them. And the fact that he passed right through a locked door tells us and shows the disciples that the resurrected Jesus will no longer be bound by physical limitations. Jesus was going to be with them no matter what. And his first words to the disciples in their state of fear tells us everything that we need to know about what it means that he has risen. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. With Jesus' resurrection, the new creation had already begun. The kingdom of God was at hand. Jesus' disciples would need to overcome their fear so that they could go out and participate in the kingdom work, participate in what God was doing. So Jesus breathed on them and gave them the power of the Holy Spirit, giving them the power to forgive sin and proved himself to them. As they put their fingers in the marks of the nails in his hand and in his side, proved himself to them so that they would believe in him and have life in his name. Life in his name means working together to bring about God's kingdom right here, right now. Jesus gave them everything, everything that they would need for their mission and everything that they would need to overcome their fears. And Jesus comes to us in all of our fear, no matter what, and says, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Jesus is with us in our fears and in our doubts. When we are afraid we are not good enough, when we're afraid we're not worthy enough or able to change to meet someone's needs, meet the needs of the world today, when we think we're not enough, Jesus says, yes, yes you are. In baptism, Jesus has said yes to all of us. Jesus is here to bring us peace, bring peace to our fears in these times. Bring peace to us so that we can continue to be part of what God has done and what God is doing. Reconciling the whole world to himself. That's our mission, to share that good news. And he has brought us all together in one body, his body. And it will happen again that we'll be all brought back together when it is safe. And in the meantime, we need to keep reaching out with the good news of Jesus. So 85% of the time, what we are afraid of turns out better than we expected if it happens at all. 85% of the time. But 100% of the time, God is with us. In this fellowship, in water, wine, and word, Jesus is with us to bring him, us peace. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us together confess our Easter faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, may we be bold to proclaim the glorious news of salvation with glad hearts and with deep and genuine trust. Grant us the opportunity through these gifts and in our daily living to lead others to a life-affirming faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish both our commonalities and our differences. Father, turn our hearts toward your people everywhere. Be with the members of Faith Lutheran Church in Okemos and their pastor, Ellen Schiff. Strengthen their relationships with you and with one another. You have put in place as leaders of your church, presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, and our Bishop Craig Satterley. Guide them as they boldly proclaim your word. Be with Jason Mills, who is studying at Gettysburg Theological Seminary. Help him to grow in wisdom and understanding of your will as he pursues your calling. And we pray for our mission partners at the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota and our Baker neighborhood partners here in Lansing. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth and all its inhabitants. Inspire us all to care for the world you have made, so that all living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a home or a place of safety. Especially in this time of social distancing, there are so many who lack a safe place to stay. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally during this pandemic. Provide healing and peace to all those affected with COVID-19 and all who are in need. Especially, we pray for Janine Grinnell, Shelby Waters, Marianne Allen, Virginia Bauman, Mary Branke, Crystal Collins, Ernie Hassel, Rhoda Hunter, Kurt Kohlmeyer, Marilyn Kostruski, Michael Mahoney, Linda McClellan, Nancy Meisner, Yvonne Nelson, Theron Palmer, Chris Ransom, Bob Robbins, Carol Rausch, Audrey Skidmore, Don Spensley, Ken Teeter, Peggy Teeter, Cheryl Van Patten, and Ron Westcott. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace and healing throughout the world. Bless the efforts of scientists, officials, and healthcare workers who are addressing the coronavirus that is sweeping the globe. Be with frontline workers during this pandemic, including healthcare professionals, first responders, police and fire officials, grocery store workers, truck drivers, and delivery workers and all those who find themselves in harm's way. Help the rest of us understand that the best way we can help them is to stay home and mitigate the spread of the virus. We pray for all who serve in our military as they help to fight the virus and to keep the peace. Especially we pray for Chris Brown, Darian Doan, Carson Kozlowski, Joshua Kozlowski, Rusty Landry, Christopher Morgan, Ben Painter, Ryan Schiffner, and Jake Sonnenberg, and Eric Wheeler. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for Don Romaine Sr., Sharon Jaster, and those we now name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in the faith. Especially we remember Mickey Lee Teed, niece of Julie Teed, who died April 13th from the coronavirus. We ask for peace for her family and friends in this time. Free us from the fear of death that we embrace the peace of the promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.